Good morning, everyone. Welcome to practical number eight on plotting IP, that is the photo current versus the optical incident power and also the responsivity curve of a photo detector in lamp view. For doing this, we'll be using the relation of photo current and responsivity as given in the equation number five and six visible on the manual. So IP is eta P naught E by HF, F we can replace it by C by lambda and R responsivity which is IP by PO is eta E by HF or eta E lambda by HC. So for this the input that we need is wavelength and input optical power, rest other are constant. Now we are going, uh, we will open the lab view in the front panel. The inputs required is, the first is efficiency and the maximum value is one, okay? Now in addition, we require wavelength as well as we require the incident optical power. But we'll be using it as a system generated values because we want the output that is IP versus PO and also the responsivity versus wavelength. So we'll be generating it as a part of a system so that we get a continuous output waveform. Now to see the output waveform, we'll be using, we'll be using XY graph, X, X, Y graph. So this we'll be using for photo current versus incident optical power and this for responsivity versus wavelength. Once we are done with the front panel, we'll go to the block diagram. Now to get the continuous plot, the first thing that we'll do is use a structure, the for do loop. And now to calculate the photo current, we'll be using the formula board. It is eta first value eta we will take. So it is eta PO lambda. So it is eta into PO into lambda divided by the constant H and C. So which is 6.626 into 10 to power of minus 30 into velocity of the light which is 3 into 10 to power of 8. This connecting our efficiency to it. Now for PO what we will do is we will use the counter I. For that first we will set the I counter to 50 and we will take this input in microwatts and lambda we will take it as we'll use a multiplier to create the lambda value which will again be dependent upon i since we are varying the range from of wavelength from say 0 to 1.7 micrometer so you just will add one multiplier constant 0.034. This will set our range from 0.034. So as we saw, initially it was not taking the value by changing the data type. So representation, now we just change it to extended precision, we could enter. Now if we multiply 0.34, it will with 50, we'll get the maximum wavelength as 1.54. Again, these wavelengths are in micrometers. So now we are set to get our IP. Now to measure IP, we'll just create one gauge to see the IP in hmm, microamperes. And also responsivity, we need to see in amperes too. So what we'll do is to see the output, just connect it here, connect the Y to IP and X to P, which is nothing but I. Okay. 
Now to uh, get the responsivity, again, what we will do is we need to just divide this by P. So what we'll do is we'll use a division And to the second arm, we will connect the P. Now this is our responsivity. So we'll just connect it to Y and connect the X to the wavelength. Okay. So we can even connect this response, see the value of responsivity in our gauge. So once this is done, we'll just run it and see. There is a mistake in the formula. It is eta e. We have missed the term value of e, which is 1.6 into 10 to power of minus 19. So this is, we can change the axis values. Responsivity. micrometer. Now we have all the values. We just need to first check our units and the formula board to see whether the values that we are getting is correct or not. We'll just add the digital displays. We'll just uh, change the scale also. Now let us in, add two more gauges for PO and wavelength to see the variation in PO and also the wavelength. We can add our digital displays for helping us to note down the values. We can connect these gauges to the values calculated for PO and for the wavelength. Now before seeing the output, we have to just change the status. Now let us try to run it and see. So we can clearly see, we can see the output RIP versus, but in the responsivity curve, what we see is uh, there is no point where this ray is coming down. Now what we will do is we need to add a condition where whenever the wavelength of the photon incident on the detector is greater than the cutoff wavelength, there will be no photons generated. So for that, we need to again make a change in our log diagram. We will here add a case structure. We need one more input. We need to input the band gap of the semiconductor material that we are using. And what is the, we calculate using our formula board. Now we can calculate the wavelength using the formula Hc by Eg. Eg. Since it's an electron volts, we need to multiply by 10 to 1.6 into 10 to power of minus 19. Now just we'll connect our Eg. Now we can use a comparison. Tell the incident wavelength is is greater than wavelength of the photon incident, uh, we, we, we will be able to see the response. Otherwise, the semiconductor will be transparent. That is the incident, the wavelength of the incident photon should be less than the wavelength corresponding to the band gap of the semiconductor used. If this is true, our responsivity is We'll use a multiplier. The responsivity will be, we'll create a constant one. The responsivity will be what we have calculated. And in case, and now we will just remove this patch.
and in case it is false we know the system will be transparent and there will be no response so responsivity will be zero so we'll again use the multiplier connect the responsivity and this time the constant will be zero the unit of the wavelength is in my meter so we need to multiply it with 10 to power of 6 to convert it into micrometers so that will help us to do the comparison so now we can clearly see after setting the units correctly our plots are coming accurately we have the responsivity going to a peak to a certain wavelength that is the cutoff wavelength and then immediately it comes down as the wavelength increases above the cutoff wavelength so this is what you have to do for the various efficiency you need to uh, find out what is your i peak and also for various semiconductors you need to calculate the cutoff wavelength and also prepare your the T curve and I can also speak curve on a graph paper. Thank you.